very important. And then getting right some basics, some bad practices in Pakistan computer science community. We talk about open source in computer science, rethinking of the CS curriculum, and then a little bit of introduction into web science since many people show interest in that. Okay. Why are we asking this? We know that set the improvement process involves three steps. If you identify the problem, then only you can improve. And then comes talking out of effective solutions. And finally, so, <laughs> so what's the problem there? You guess. <laughs>
as you saw, this was a definition by Gibbs and Tucker, who are computer science education experts. And they, this is how they define computer science. But not many people in Pakistan, especially students, know about this, these aspects. So, and there are some bad practices of students, on the part of students that we like to criticize. Number one is their practice of running after tools in Pakistan computer science. amongst the students. Uh, Few days back, while in Russia, I got an email from a student who was working on a web crawler. My thesis, master's thesis statement was also on web crawling, so she required some help from me. Someone from FAST uh, recommended me to her, and then what she said in her email was that she's using a .NET crawler and she's finding it hard to run it because of some licensing issues. The, her, the answer to her question was in it itself. She was using .NET. So obviously licensing issues were bound to come and she was unable to use it because the, uh, for use it, uh, to use a fully functional web crawler, she had to purchase the license and she did not read the terms of service carefully. So such sort of questions on the part of students really offend you. So I put up this status on my Facebook. Advice to CS students in Pakistan, please get out of .NET syndrome if you want to achieve anything meaningful in computer science, hash research. I put it on Twitter and my Twitter is linked to my Facebook. I got this many number of likes and also a lot of comments, around 36. Uh, so it shows that students are listening and it, I was happy to learn that students do realize their mistakes. But you know what happened the next day? A student uh, from the place where I have graduated, done my undergraduate studies, Karachi University, she wrote to me that uh, I'm not interested in .NET or web development. Databases interest me. So I want to do an Oracle certification. What would you suggest? And I was like, oh no, not again. <laughs> one person says .NET, one person says Oracle certification. This is not a do not run after tools. Computer science is a scientific discipline. It's not about tools. Please try to understand it. For example, when I work in the kitchen, I'm not crazy about a tool, right? What is the thing that makes my food good will be my own recipe, the way I cook it, not the tools that I use. I'm not crazy about, oh, this knife is so good. I want to learn how to use this knife. Do you do that? That would be so silly. Likewise applies for computer science. Please students, stop it. Okay. Realize the true potential of computer science. There's a debate these days in New York Times on computer science Sputnik moment. Sputnik means something that's going to change the world. It's at this point, computer science right now. And I, I seriously recommend you to follow that debate as it has some very interesting aspects both in favor and against of computer science. This is a perspective by Dr. Ed Lazuska, who is Bill and Melinda Gates Chair in Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Washington. He says, for students who want to change the world, there is no field with greater impact or leverage than computer science. Just take a look at the 2010 report by President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, which characterized computer science as arguably unique among all fields of science and engineering in the breadth of its impact. For students who want to change the world, how many of our students enter computer science with this perspective in mind? None, I'm sure. All they want is jobs. All they want is scope for them. All they want is we have a good career. That's not how computer science is perceived by the well-accomplished scientists in the field. It's a scientific discipline. Don't ignore the science here. It's very important. Okay. Then there was this article on 10th September this month in New York Times. Look at this piece. Wisconsin appears to be the driver's seat and route to win as it leads 51-10 after third quarter. Wisconsin added to its lead when Russell Wilson found J Jacob Peterson for an eight-yard touchdown to make the score 44. This is an article on a football match by the Wisconsin team. And you know what? It's computer generated. By a and this was a, by a tool uh, and read 
by a company called Narrative Science. It's a startup. Are we even close to doing these sort of things in computer science? Or are our computer scientists just making websites? Or developing small tools, small web applications? Is this why you entered computer science? Just to make some small tools, toys? Ask yourself. Okay, from here I'll hand over to Atif.
All right, let me tell you <coughs> more, even more. Within a university, they have a corporate sector where they invite corporate world to work from there. They don't have head offices outside somewhere into some kind of a belly. South Korea is not doing things like that. Their academics is so powerful. So what they do is later on realize in the industry. They finance academics, and academics generates the real output. It's not only Microsoft that has the head office over there. It's IBM research as well. So we're there. So it's quite common over there. So that's the power. If you do things correctly, you'll have people's attention towards you. No matter who you are, where you are, where you are from, what you do. So that's the power. If you don't realize your power, you'll surrender your rights. <clears throat> Alright, <clears throat> what's the relationship between open source and computer science? This has been debated a lot. I have been listening to this thing a lot. I mean, what Microsoft versus open source. Come on guys, I will be very straight and blunt to you. <clears throat> Do you know, you know chemistry, right? Do you learn in chemistry polymers of a specific company? Not at all, sir. Never. You learn polymers. You learn basic primitives. You don't learn someone's technology and just how to use it. That's not science. If I tell you how to drive Ferrari, can I call you an engineer? Nobody in the world would say yes, never. Then how about Microsoft? Do you know what's written inside their things? Do you know the basic constructs they have? Can you even become a scientist on top of Microsoft's technology? No. That's why there is a balance in different universities between open source tools and not so Microsoft tools. Because they are about to teach you polymers, engine, and not how to use Ferrari or how to use polymer of a specific company. That broadens your vision. Right? So that's the difference between open source, why you should be open source. Because whatever you do, you can test within your hands. That's why when you see some research papers popping up in different international conferences in computer science, usually you'll find people not working on top. And barely if someone works on, you can see that that person is very naive and very new in the field. Later on, he will be just gone from the field because he is not that smart. Otherwise, he will adopt the better things. Better thing means the things that are open that he can control. Right? If, if I give you an engine, if I, I give you a car and say, improve the engine, and I tell you, you cannot open the car, what does it mean? You can never improve the engine. Right? The similar applies on closed source technologies. You cannot do this. It's not about that you shouldn't learn closed source. That's a different thing. That's into technology. When we say IT, information technology. When we say computer science, that's science. If you want to learn IT, okay, on the IT part, you know, technology is good enough. But when you are learning computer science, not good. So you should realize this. It's your choice. And even the Microsoft people, they also have people from <coughs> not so Microsoft platform. Even their own researchers work on open source technologies. You can have papers and you will find them they are not saying that they implemented their things in Microsoft. Maybe a surprise for you, but you may follow. So we say open source, what is it? It is shape, learning curve, freedom to modify and play around with the code. That's how you can learn things. Field computer science feel of computer science community instead of being a client of someone, sense of accomplishment because you do something by your own hand, not on top of someone else and making you proud to feel something you have done. <clears throat> so rethinking CS curriculum, I'll say it this way, while it is true that economy has forced the issue, CS curriculum has never been attractive. It is designed for the sole purpose of producing software engineers. We should aim for more outcomes from a computer science curriculum. Programming is only part of this story. Computer science is not all about programming. 
So if you have this fear, there is some updates for you in different parts of the world. They no longer teach ICS with C language. They no longer even teach thing with things with C language. They usually use Python, which is a very simple scripting language, in order to minimize uh, the difficulty in understanding syntax. And what they do in this course, they maximize team effort, they maximize how to use small things and join it together to develop something better. That matures your understandability of the system. And that makes introduction to, uh, introduction to computer science for an undergrad student. So that's what is being done. Maybe it was not there four years back in the world. It has just popped up, pop, pop, popped up maybe two years back or three years back. So things are changing, but you should be aware of it. To attract more students to computing, we need to create more entry points into curriculum. So we should have not only programming, more than that. Make curriculum requirements more flexible. Create several CS1 course to abstract the student with uh, diverse interest in computing. So there should be many small things in ICS course. For example, little bit about web. I'm talking about ICS course. Little bit about multimedia. Little bit about games. Little bit about robotics. Little bit about artificial intelligence. In just one class, little bit. So they should know how to join it together. Like kids, when you were kids, if you were familiar with logo, Lego, maybe? Lego. Right. Lego. Lego. Right. Lego. There are blocks with which your kids construct buildings or different things. And that's what IC is all about. So those blocks are small things, very simple, not syntactically complicated, very simple. They put it together and they feel, oh, they have developed some robot. I mean, there are certain kind of assignment <coughs> even in ICS. Anyways, I will short on time. Okay, I'll just talk about now what is science of the web, right? <clears throat> Why we need web science as a research field? It's a question mark. Because we need system level understanding of the web. So why do we need web science? Some of you, if you are curious about what is web science, do you have systematic level of understanding? Do you have systematic level of understanding of the web? Do you have it? Do you have some some standard procedure how you can say this is web or you just see it as a noise or a buzzword that's why there is a, there is a requirement of proper discipline of web science so web science has social interaction uh, social and engineering dimensions as you saw in the previous talk of Arjuna that where she discussed the social interactions are very important then there are some engineering dimensions in my talk I talked about previously about uh, some constructs, data structures, and complexity, scalability issues. So they are also here. In social interaction plus the, all the primitives that you have learned in computer science. Joint team brings together web science. <coughs> it also extends well beyond computer science tradition because it's not about computers. It's not about computers. It's about also people. There's a difference between people and computer. Who's not? Computer or human beings? Human beings. Can your computer understand humans? So what happens on the web could not be realized by mere computers, right? You don't have good traditional algorithms to deal with it, right? Then there are people in social sciences, psychology, who have theories of under about understanding human nature. So that's where you should take your concepts from and implement inside your uh, inside the web science. So that's why it's not that simple. It's not traditionally computer science. It's much more. So our, our kids, our students do jobs of web development or something. But have they got a degree in web science? If they would have, they would be much better in their job market or wherever in the industry than what they are at now. Because they don't have systematic understanding, right? So what does it involve with it? I mean, it's a science, 
as I told you, because there are some scientific theories that you have need to work on. It's also complex because web is a large population. There are a large number of people. When there are a large number of people, there is a large possibility of doing business. When there is a large possibility of doing business, it's a proper e-commerce thing. Then there is public, then there are politics, then there are other things that happen on the web. Think about it's not one region. Web is international. And you never get international audience anywhere else except for that. So it's different. Web is kind of, it's a new field. Web science is a new field. Uh, it has a lot of disciplines together. It is, and I'll, I'll show you with the diagram in order to just find it out because we have short time. So there is computer science, there are artificial intelligence, there are economics, there are laws. When I say computer science, you know why computer science is into web science. When I say artificial intelligence, you need to understand human beings. Okay? When I say economics, yes, on web we do business. So when there is business, definitely economics is coming in. Definitely there is a problem of law over the web. You can't get Facebook facility in China because the law does not allow. So if you are launching a product, you should clearly see China's law before launching it in China. So law is also important, cyber law is very important. You should have this awareness if you are targeting mass audience uh, somewhere where the law is not supporting you. Social culture aspect, maybe if you have launched a product from a web, uh, but it does not appeal people's culture, maybe it won't be that successful. So for example, if you launch Facebook, kind of a thing, but you have facility of food. In Pakistan, it may not be that good. But if you launch similar in China with Chinese language, people will bound to follow more of Chinese language product than they would use, feel comfortable with English. But it would be otherwise in Pakistan, right? So you should be aware of it. Then there is a media aspect. Now media reaches you before you reach to media. I mean, you don't tune in every time what you see in the news. Sometimes, usually in my case, I get the news from Facebook. I don't want to see what's, what happened, but somebody on my profile keeps on changing that somebody, uh, updates me of what happened. So it's something that I don't want to see, but I get it. So media has become uh, proactive, not reactive. Uh, then there are uh, sociology angles you need to understand. There are psychology angles, there are mathematical angles. This, there is a whole intersection over here which makes web as a proper science. So maybe in future you will have some degrees in web sciences, even in Pakistan. So we should know I mean, what we need to learn as a student. So there is a relationship between web and entrepreneurship. This is what Eric Smith says, and I quote, Eric Smith is a uh, was a CEO at Google, ex-CEO actually. He says, web science represents a pretty big next step in the evolution of information. This kind of research is likely to have a lot of influence on the next generation of researchers, scientists, and most importantly, the next generation of entrepreneurs who will build new companies from this. So how many startups do you hear in computer science these days? Many, I guess, right? People do startups, right? You don't often hear those many startups coming from BBA, but you hear those many startups coming from the computer science team. And sometimes they join together and make a startup. So, where is the focus of entrepreneurship at the moment? In proper business discipline or in some body of computer science? So you can think of it. You can think on it. Facebook is an example, Twitter is an example, and there are many others, maybe you don't know. For Pakistan, web science and technology is a very win-win situation. You can more study this. Uh, job market is heavily consumed by the technology of web solutions, right? So if it's that, we should be teaching more of web to our students because industry really needs what academia teaches. Or otherwise, what industry needs should be taught by the academics. But if we want to improve our uh, industry, we need to have better academics than what industry demands. That's how industry 
to get mature. Remote industry such as Google, Yahoo, Microsoft is heavily investing in the web science. So if you do something in web science, you may get employed into Microsoft Research, Google Research, Yahoo Research, Bing, uh, uh, Bing Research, Naver Research. There are many popular uh, web uh, portals or web search engines, companies, big, large search engines, maybe Facebook and these people. They are actually looking for people who have innovation, <coughs> who have innovative ideas in this discipline. So you may have better portfolio on the international level if you really study this. Business is getting a good amount of share from the web. Social media reaches people massively than traditional media. Yeah. You, as I said, usually we get more news from Facebook than we can get from TV. And that's all. Thank you. If you have any questions. Thank you.